Joshua's tree because it was based on the Joshua Law story. That was the story, I've been at mental illness for decades, but that was the story that broke my soul. And God would not allow me to, to let it go. I wanted to just try to walk away from it, but God just broke my soul and said, you have to do something about this. So that's when, that's where the name Joshua Street came from. I didn't want his little girls, the one little girl that he had left living in the, in the house that he had left behind. I didn't want her legacy to be a murderous scene. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be something much more profound because I believe that's what God wanted it to be, something much more profound. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm moving forward with Joshua's tree. And you're one of the 12 that I would like to examine your experience and mm -hmm. really do a deep dive into it so that we can try to help other people that are going through these experiences because, mm -hmm. you know, it's a battle, it's an ongoing battle for you. Mm -hmm. You know, you you know, it's your story, and we don't have a lot of time to get into your story, but mm -hmm. you've done the deep dive into the dark night of the soul, and you're a fascinating, beautiful woman, and I think you have an amazing story to tell, and if, I'd be honored if you allowed me to use your story to help the world, I guess. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, it's, you know, when you, when you said that going to the medical community for support or help and it, it's not a place to investigate it, and it's not a place to encourage sharing with people that aren't going through stuff or haven't gone through stuff you know the shame and the um, alienation and everything is so profound that um, this is so fabulous that you're doing this Mm -hmm. It's really, it's exciting, and I'm I'm very um, I I tell my story <laughs> easily, mm -hmm. um, and maybe that's part of uh, why you know there's a maybe there's a um, inability to have a, a solid boundary around myself and everything else because ultimately there is no boundary. So on a, on a sensitive level, I, I feel that there is no boundary, so it's very easy for me to share because it, it's, I am you, right? Mm -hmm. um, so when I really hit the wall, I was encouraged to paint. That was something that was very, um, really promoted around me. And I've always loved drawing. Um, and I ran an ad agency. Uh, and there was, we had an in-house uh, studio that had incredible creative talent. They are just genius talent. Um, so when people said to me, you know, painting would be a good way to kind of exercise or this, this demon or, or get through this period, um, to me that was terrifying. You know, I thought, you know, my inner critic would just Kill me. <laughs> you know, like, are you kidding? Yeah, are you kidding? <laughs> you know, you've seen the people around me? Like, exactly. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's right. Um, so, uh, my mother actually gave me a canvas, and it was uh, fairly large. It was almost the size of a door. And um, I was alone in the house. I had a, a 17 year old daughter, um, and it was just the two of us in the home. And uh, I started painting, and I, I think I only had house paint. I didn't have any fancy, and I'd never painted before. Um, and I turned all the lights out and put on some really great music. Um, it's called, the, the music I chose was the Anonymous Four. It's four women from New York. And their, their music is very uh, ancient, ancient. It, it's almost like the Gregory, Gregorian chanting. But it's it feels like you're in a sacred space listening oh, to these wonderful. voices. I it's it's, love to it's get that. so remarkable. Mm -hmm. And um, I put their their music on and their voices on, turned all the lights out, and I just lit candles. And uh, oh, I have to go back. Before I did that, I put house paint on the canvas, and then put things on it like dryer lint, scrunched plastic bag, sliced potatoes. Um, just stuff. And then when it dried, I picked everything off. And then I was ready. On a Saturday night, Rachel was out with friends, 
and I turned the lights out, lit candles, put on the anonymous four, and I just basically pushed paint around on this canvas and just let it, I didn't know the colors I was choosing because the light wasn't, you know, I couldn't translate the colors very well. And um, when I hit a ridge, I'd go around the ridge kind of idea. And if I saw something kind of like when you look in clouds and you see a dog or whatever, I would define whatever kind of showed up. And, um, and it was such a, such a remarkable process. I, was, I had no responsibility in this process, which for me, and I think, I, I mean, I think probably a lot of humans, I think as a woman, I think a lot of women, um, every decision has so much responsibility. And at that time in my life with what was going on and what I was going through psychologically, um, responsibility was such a, a, a painful place to be and I couldn't avoid it. No, I it, 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 How to dress in the morning was a, too big a choice. It was too difficult and the responsibility of choosing the right shirt was immense. So this was an exercise in no responsibility and I just pushed the paint around and I listened. It was my first place in my life where I really started to listen to myself and it felt like um, my higher self, my my higher self that, that knows uh, what my conscious self might not be able to grasp. So I just started listening and I would, the brush would go toward, no, it would have to go there, you know, and get that color of paint. And so, and I, I and another thing that was really so wonderful was, I always wondered how artists knew when something was finished. And I had a moment where this feels like it's finished. Mm -hmm. It was just so enchanting, really, mm -hmm. and, and, and to feel mm -hmm. like you participated, that's what it was, it wasn't, I wasn't doing it, and, and since then I've realized that I'm not doing anything mm -hmm. solely, mm -hmm. but this was my introduction to understanding that I am not alone, mm -hmm. nothing I am doing is solo. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I brought this canvas, carried it into the living room, which all the lights were out. I put it on the mantle, and I turned the light on that shone down onto the mantle, and went and sat on the couch, and then opened my eyes, and I just wept. It was such an overwhelming feeling, like I was a part of something. I was not alone in this nightmare that I was going through. Mm -hmm. um, part of something so important there was and so sacred. So sacred, mm -hmm. and it was such an incredibly remarkable gift. And I'll show you the, mm -hmm. the image of the painting. Um, this is just a, I don't know how well it would read on it, but this is mm -hmm. what I ended up with. It's like an night. archangel painting. Almost, it almost makes me think it's me. And, and on that canvas had um, I had put potato slices and zucchini slices and plastic bag scrunched up and dryer lint and it just, it had a story to tell and it wasn't my personal story, it was my higher story, my bigger story. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't tell it by myself, you know, because no. there is no self no, like that. There is no self. <laughs> yeah, there is it's no an self. illusion, yeah. That's right. So that was the first painting I did, and I think it opened me up to the possibility that maybe I don't have to do it by myself, and maybe it's okay that who I thought I was, I'm not. Um, Anyone going through uh, that dark night might experience what I experienced was the, the absolute terror that I'm not who I thought I was. I really thought I had a handle on 
who I was. You were a very and, successful career woman. You were on your game. You were on top of the world. You were a gangbuster, right? And I was just the center of the world, really. Yeah. <laughs> Even in my personal life, I felt that everything would fall apart if I wasn't there to Hold make it, it happen. Together. Make yeah. It happen. And uh, so that was my introduction, and then I, I continued to paint.